Hello everyone and welcome back to the season 17 TCEC Super Final again uh, Lila Chess Zero versus Stockfish and uh, it's it's really an interesting game featuring again a very interesting opening every opening is interesting in the match since they are pre predefined and some of you has be, have been asking why don't they just uh, let them battle it out without uh, predefining any openings uh, well it's uh, much more interesting this way I don't know if it would be uh, fair uh, to, to the standard engines I think neural networks would be would have an advantage here uh, as uh, uh, standard engines are, are kind of better when, when it comes to really tactical positions. So here uh, we, we as viewers get uh, much more interesting games to enjoy and uh, they don't care they play pretty much uh, I mean they will play whatever you tell them to play. So uh, it does kind of make sense and we get to see how our favorite openings uh, are played uh, on the highest level. For example if, you, if you're a fan of the Evans Gambit then there will be an Evans Gambit game where both Lila and Stockfish will have the white pieces. So uh, it's interesting but uh, I, I would also enjoy a match where uh, they would just go uh, 100 games head to head uh, without pretty fine openings. But maybe they install that at some point uh, maybe in some other seasons. Uh, who knows? We'll see. But getting back to the game, uh, Lila opens with c4, uh, the English opening. And here we have knight to c6 and d4. Uh, and this is it for the... Uh, for what they have to play up uh, from this point on it is uh, every engine for themselves uh, and here uh, Stockfish replies with e5 when uh, with the colors reversed uh, Lila played e6 here instead of uh, Stockfish c5 uh, but okay e5 by Stockfish with uh, d5 grabbing more space in the center Bishop to b4 with check Knight to d2 and now knight c back to e7, getting the knight arm out, of, out of harm's way and queen to a4 now, attacking the bishop here. Uh, and uh, there is one game that humans played where c5 was played, but here we have a5 and already as of move 5 we have a completely new game. So a3, uh, challenging the bishop, uh, asking do you want to go back or do you want to capture, and well bishop to d6 is a possibility. Uh, just bishop captures on d2 by, uh, by Stockfish. Uh, we have bishop captures on d2 and now knight to f6. Uh, continuing development, we have knight to f3 and now e4. Uh, kicking back the knight, or in this case forward, uh, we have knight to d4 and now Stockfish castles. We have e3, preparing to develop the light square bishop. We have d6, uh, black does the same, and now bishop to c3, shifting the bishop over to this uh, very nice diagonal. Uh, we have knight to g6 now. From g6 the knight uh, can uh, nicely come to e5 if needed. We have queen back to c2. The queen is no longer needed uh, on a4. Uh, and now queen to e7. Uh, just continuing development. We have a queenside castle by Lila. So we have castles on opposite sides. Uh, definitely uh, uh, gonna be a, a race. Bishop to d7 uh, and now comes knight to b5 and here already a very interesting moment uh, do you capture on b5 or not uh, probably you do want to capture because it opens up the c file well kind of does uh, but it's not as simple for example if captures captures now of course at some point you want to bust open with c6 but it's not it's not easy to do that for example if rook f to c8 uh, white can just continue developing bishop e2 and now c6 can always be met with bishop captures on f6. Queen captures and bishop to g4 now forcing the rook back because if rook comes here to keep uh, the rook on the c file just b6 and uh, it's uh, now a better position for white. After rook e7 you can capture here and it's actually white who's pushing on the queen side even though white castled on the queen side. So very very instructive uh, idea this uh, knight to b5 move which you can also sometimes use in your own games not specifically knight to b5 but just because your opponent can open up uh, some lines in front of your king doesn't mean that it's always good and such is the case here so stockfish decides for, to go for knight to e5 instead uh, offering uh, the, the c7 pawn here but uh, again this time you don't capture it if you capture it then again after the knight is under attack you go back now you just immediately win back uh, the pawn so it's not really an issue and already black has a, a nicely open c file so after knight to e5 uh, we have king to b1, uh, getting the king out of uh, uh, the c file and also out of the check if knight to d3 ever lands. Uh, we have rook f to c8, now defending and maybe preparing to push c6 and h3 by Leela. h6 by stockfish, uh, again uh, creating some breeding room for the king and now rook to g1. Uh, Leela is now ready to start pushing on the king's side. We have c5, uh, stockfish asking... 
uh, do you want to keep the keep the uh, uh, position closed or do you want to open up with D captures uh, on C6 on Passan? And Lila prefers to keep it closed with A4. Uh, here Stockfish grabs the knight, we have bishop captures, a captures, uh, and now uh, while you could go b6 uh, to uh, keep everything uh, closed and maybe at some point maybe you can double up on the a file and start pushing here, uh, Lila would be much faster on the queen side and uh, so Stockfish decides to uh, make the attack happen just a little bit faster and pushes a4. Now it's, it's a good idea, you want to push a3, bust open the position. However, if you don't manage to do so, the a4 pawn could be a liability sometimes in the future. So Lila just continues with the plan, bishop to e2, uh, and uh, here comes knight to d3 uh, with a check. Uh, it, it's really uh, a weird idea. Uh, probably a3 is what everyone was expecting, and knight to d3 uh, comes with the idea that uh, Stockfish wants to give back, well, give up a pawn, uh, sacrifice some material to start the attack even sooner. Uh, but it uh, to me it it's not at all clear how to me it's uh, it, to me it looks like a move uh, way back when I first started playing chess I would play uh, a move like this with the knight and my opponent would just capture it and grab a pawn and I would be like yeah that that was good uh, and here I don't really see the compensation for black but okay stockfish does show some compensation stockfish goes rook to e8 uh, a3 right away uh, doesn't uh, yield all that much for for black because after captures and captures white has the very unpleasant bishop captures here uh, which now opens up a double attack so you cannot uh, bust open the position right away uh, you would end up being uh, down a rook so here rook to e8 by stockfish uh, and now uh, bishop back to e1, anticipating knight to e4, so the bishop nicely controls the knight from uh, from e1. Uh, we have knight back to d7, probably going for e5, and now rook back to a3, not allowing black to push the pawn to, uh, to a3. And queen e4, now Stockfish offers a queen trade, which Lila accepts uh, and accepts it gladly. Queen captures, we have rook captures, uh, attacking the c4 pawn, and now it's... Um, not uh, not clear how white will defend the c4 pawn, but Leela finds a very creative way and plays f3. And now you can even pause the video and try to figure out is it okay to grab the c4 pawn or not. Well, I, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds uh, and have a nice sip of my water. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, uh, I'm just kidding. I know all of you were able to do it. Uh, it's not okay to capture the pawn, so congratulations everyone. If you capture the pawn, b3 wins the game for white. Uh, since the rook is trapped, uh, all of the uh, squares here are covered, so the rook uh, does not have anywhere to go. The only square you have is uh, to go, uh, of course, if you capture, then you lose the rook on a8. And if you go here to give up the exchange, still not much better, just rook captures on a4. You're up the exchange, completely winning. So probably something Stockfish failed to take into account maybe uh, when sacrificing that pawn for the attack. Uh, but who knows, uh, rook back to e8 and now Lila just continues, king to c2 being up a pawn and like I mentioned if you don't push this pawn all the way to a3 it's gonna be a liability and uh, if Lila grabs another pawn then uh, well being down two pawns it will be a, a big challenge for Stockfish to, to not lose this king f8. Uh, we have king to d3, centralizing your king, knight e5 check, king back to c3, and the knight back to d7. We have bishop to d2, guarding d3 pawn, and now h5. Uh, Lila uh, stops g5 by pushing h4. Uh, we have knight to b6 now. The knight will put pressure on the c4 pawn, also keep an eye on the a4 pawn, so maybe you can activate this rook. King to d3, and now king to e7. To, to activate the king, you have to shift it over. But now e4... Uh, grabbing more space in the center. Also now uh, the bishop has uh, access to the king side as well. f6 by black not allowing this and now rook to e1. And here uh, Lila will now try to shift the rooks over to the e file and double up there. We have king d7 and now uh, f4. Grabbing more space here not allowing any knight uh, shifting to the center of the board in the future. King c7 and now bishop to c3, keeping an eye on the e5 square, uh, preparing e5 at some point. King back to d7, Stockfish just waits to see uh, what will happen and now rook to a1. Not, not worried about rook to a3 since uh, it's still defended twice. So rook to e7, black now has to double up on the e file, rook to e3, Lila does the same, rook a to e8 and rook a to e1. 
So again, e5 being the idea, we have knight to c8, uh, and now comes g3. Just uh, uh, improving the position as much as possible before you decide on any uh, rash decisions like, like pushing a pawn. So knight back to b6, and here uh, Stock, uh, Lila finds the, uh, the uh, again, very creative bishop to a5, uh, just attacking uh, the knight here, forcing it back, and also the knight is one of the defenders of the a4 pawn. Uh, so you have to move it back. And king to c7, if you try something like this, this loses on the spot. Now you allow e5. And now after some trades, or or all of the trades, doesn't really matter. Captures, captures, and captures. This e6 will be deadly since it uh, deflects the king from the defense of the knight here. And it's just winning. So after bishop to uh, a5, we have knight to c8 by Stockfish. And now uh, bishop to c3. Not going for rook to a1 to go after the pawn right away because then you allow f5. Uh, so the two rooks are needed here. Bishop back to c3. Lila repeats once here. Uh, probably checking if Stockfish will repeat knight to b6. Then probably Lila would repeat and find a different plan. Uh, but Stockfish just says king to c7. Now probably bishop a5 check will be met with king back to d7. Uh, but okay, uh, rook to e2 now, uh, and here we have rook to f7. Stockfish waits to see what what's happening, and now rook to a1, that, uh, th that the rook moved from the e-file. Uh, if you don't move the rooks uh, from the e-file, if you repeat something like king to d7, uh, then uh, Lila would just have to find some other way. It's hard to, hard to figure out what way, but at some point probably you would have to uh, wiggle your way out of... Uh, uh, this f5 being a threat and then just shift your rook over and picking up the a4 pawn. But Stockfish does it right away, so Lila uh, immediately goes for the a4 pawn, rook to a1. And now, uh, problem is you cannot defend it. If you go knight b6, then still bishop to a5. And now if rook to a8 going after the bishop, now you can still just grab the pawn. Rook captures as the knight is pinned uh, and there's no way to, to figure this out. Uh, so king to b8 instead. Uh, and now Lila just grabs the pawn. Uh, rook captures an a4. And now Lila is up two pawns with a very clear idea. b4 is coming and you are busting open here on the queen side. Uh, we have b6 and b4 right away. Uh, c captures on b4. We have uh, rook captures on b4, not bishop captures. Still, the bishop needs to keep an eye on the e5 pawn. Uh, e5 square, obviously. Rook captures on b4. And now king to b7. Uh, we have rook back to b1. And knight to e7. Now, and now this is a, a, merely a question of how Lila will win this. But uh, like the title suggests, uh, it, it's a very funny endgame. So uh, rook to a1. Uh, we have g6 by Stockfish and now bishop to d4 with ideas of rook a6 grabbing the pawn here. So knight to c8, the knight will nicely defend the, the b6 pawn and now rook to e3. We have rook to g8 uh, preparing to push g5, now comes bishop to c3. Uh, we have king to c7 uh, and e5 now. Uh, finally busting open here, f captures, we have f captures and king b7 now. Now the knight can move so you don't have to worry about rook to a7. Uh, and here, uh, e captures on d6. Uh, e6 uh, seems like a more natural move, but uh, I guess, uh, you know, it, it, it's a matter of taste. Uh, bo bo both uh, moves are, you know, quite quite good. So Lila instead goes e captures on d6. We have knight captures and now bishop to b4. Uh, preparing to, to grab that knight. So knight back to c8. And now rook a to e1. And here you can see Lila is completely dominating uh, everything. Uh, all of the squares here taken. The knight cannot enter the game. The rooks with complete control of the e file. Not much to do here for Stockfish. So g5, you have to play something. Uh, h captures, rook captures, and now rook to h1. Uh, putting pressure on this pawn here. We have king c7, and now bishop back to c3. Uh, rook f to f5 now, uh, defending the, the pawn once again, and now rook to h4. We have knight to d6, finally the knight enters the game, but now rook f4. Uh, you force a rook trade here, king to d7, and now uh, bishop to b4. Again, you want to trade up, uh, trade off as much material as possible, so knight b7, of course Stockfish prevents it, but now rook captures, rook captures, and now rook to e6, cutting the king off uh, from uh, entering, entering the game. Uh, and here we have knight to d8 going after the rook. Uh, if you try and defend the pawn with something like king here, just uh, rook checks the next move you're going to pick up the pawn. So uh, it's impossible to save it. So knight to d8, but now rook captures on b6. Lila grabs yet another pawn. 
King e8 and now king to e4, attacking the rook, rook to f2 and now bishop c5, pushing the rook uh, somewhere else, rook to b2 and now bishop to d4, still harassing the rook, rook to h2 and now comes bishop to f6, putting pressure on the knight here. Uh, and here, uh, problem is, uh, if you go for something like king to d7 to, to try and get away, uh, c5 is coming, c6 is coming, and your king will not have anywhere to hide. So here, Stockfish played rook to c2, uh, going after the c4 pawn. And here comes the moment where I thought it was incredibly funny. Uh, what do you play here? Like, if, if it was your move, what do you play here? Uh, even pause the video. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding rook to b8. You just attack the pin piece. Well, uh, uh, basically now you're pinning the attack piece or the other way around. Well, it, it was already attacked, but now you're attacking it twice. So uh, <laughs> there, there's no move here for black. Point is, if you try and get away, for example, to go for something like this, uh, even bishop can just capture and you're up a whole piece. Or even better, king here, you force the rook back and only after the rook moves, so you don't even lose the c4 pawn, uh, then you capture this guy here and you are up a whole piece. Uh, but Leela decides against it. Leela just grabs the knight. Uh, and this is uh, what I thought it was incredibly funny uh, because uh, like Capablanca used to say, you know, if you complicate chess, you don't understand it. And here Lila also uh, says there's there's no need in keeping more material on the board. There, the, I can just give up my bishop as well and the position will still be just, just as winning. So king captures. Uh, and now king d3, uh, pushing away the rook, not allowing to capture the c4 pawn, rook to c1, and now uh, rook to h6, going after the pawn. Of course, it's four pawns to one, uh, so it's uh, completely winning, but uh, the, the humor uh, persists. Uh, we have king to c7, rook captures on h5, and king to d6 now. And now, again, how would you play this position? Well, you'd probably try something like g4, or you'd try rook to h6 check, or you'd try maybe like king to d4, and then uh, Stockfish would uh, continue checking you from behind, and then you'd realize you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, but not Leela. Leela, again, just simplifies it. c5 check gives up one of the pawns. You don't need all the pawns. Point is, if rook captures, then b6. And now, again, uh, not much to do here. If rook to b5... Uh, rook to h6 check uh, and now if king captures you just check and pick up the rook and then of course this pawn is winning uh, and if you don't have to rook to h6 check if you go back king to d7 then king to c4 and again uh, whatever you do rook to b2 rook b1 g4 is coming again the the three pass pawns are winning point is you've uh, pushed back the black king and now your white king uh, starts marching forward so here instead of rook captures king captures was played but now even d6 with check lila gives yet another pawn uh, ag again if you capture it then rook to h6 check king d7 rook to h7 check you cannot go to c6 so let's say king d8 and now king d4 and again you've pushed the black king all the way back and your two uh two pass pawns will be completely winning so here stockfish decided to join in the humor he said okay i will not grab your pawn we have king to d2 now rook to c8 and now uh d7 and it was in this position that stockfish resigned the game uh, or as engines do, they uh, decided that the evaluation is too great to continue the game. Uh, and uh, another uh, great victory for Leela. This was game 38, and uh, at the end of game th 38, Leela is leading the match with a two-point margin. Uh, I don't know the exact score, but um, it, is, it is by a two-point margin. Uh, so really impressive as at some point, you know, that Stockfish won the game with the black pieces and then Stockfish was leading by, by a point and then uh, Leela was able to equalize and now uh, leading by a two-point margin. Uh, really incredible stuff. Uh, here, of course, uh, the, the resign is uh, necessary because after the rook blocks, rook d5, uh, you will just... Uh, push uh, pu push the pawns to victory for example king c4 king d3 yes you will give up this pawn but it doesn't matter king e3 king c6 you're gonna go king f4 and after the rook is captured the king and pawn endgame is of course winning for white king e7 you're gonna go king g6 king here king here and now the pass pawn just uh, becomes a queen so yeah, uh, that's uh, w uh, another game uh, from the TCEC Super Final Season 17. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Eric uh, uh, Wainwright, uh, Derek Fraro, uh, Jeffrey M uh, Mickles, uh, Christopher Dick, and Keith Tester for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. 
As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here, and thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.